Hello, uh, my name is Abbas Zaidi. I'm a cardiology consultant um, from the uh, University Hospital of Wales in Cardiff. Um, and um, I have a particular interest in echocardiography and um, other forms of imaging, such as cardiac MRI. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Luigi Badano. I am a professor of cardiovascular medicine at uh, the University of uh, Milano Bicocca, Milan, uh, Italy. Uh, I have been past president of the European uh, Association of uh, Cardiovascular Imaging and uh, I am uh, the um, director of the multimodality imaging uh, laboratory at the Istituto Oxologico Italiano uh, in Milan. So the British Society of Echocardiography uh, produced a guideline um, last year for the echocardiographic assessment of the right heart. Um, now, the, the primary focus of that document was the evaluation of the structure, morphology and function of the right ventricle. Um, now, we did touch on the tricuspid and pulmonary valves. However, um, they were not the main focus of the document. Now, we therefore felt that you know, the right heart, the right sided um, heart valves merited their own dedicated document. Uh, and there are a number of reasons for that. Um, first of all, um, the, the right heart has been neglected for many years. It hasn't received as much attention as the left heart has, but you know we're increasingly recognizing the importance of the right heart and its structures. Um, for example, we are recognizing that uh, diseases such as secondary tricuspid regurgitation, um, which is a very common problem, um, has a very poor prognostic um, uh, prognosis, uh, an independently poor prognosis. Um, that's something that we're learning about all the time. Secondly, our techniques for quantifying the right heart, um, not only the right ventricular um, structure and function, but also valvular function, valvular regurgitation, have improved so much um, in recent years um, with the advent of things like 3D echocardiography, which has now become routine, um, even for the assessment of the right heart. Um, for example, um, looking at 3D quantification of tricuspid regurgitation. And that's giving us a much better understanding of the right heart, right heart structures um, and valve disease. And thirdly, we have um, interventional techniques for right-sided heart valve disease, which are really coming into the foreground now. So um, given all of these different factors, we felt that it was timely for us to produce a dedicated document for uh, the tricuspid and pulmonary valve uh, echocardiographic assessment. Uh, the document uh, uh, has uh, uh, an extensive uh, review of the normal anatomy of the, the tricuspid valve using the conventional 2D echocardiography and also 3D echocardiography. Then uh, there is a brief review of uh, the diseases uh, uh, that affects both uh, the pulmonary tricuspid valve and also um, reviewing the relatively new uh, um, conditions like the atrogenic uh, functional tricuspid regurgitation and the tricuspid regurgitation associated to the presence of pacemaker uh, wires that uh, have been discovered in her recent years, particularly using 3D uh, echocardiography. Then uh, there is uh, an um, extensive uh, discussion about the pros and cons of the different parameters using to grading the regurgitation and the stenosis um, um, uh, severity of uh, the valves, and particularly realizing the importance of uh, considering the different hemodynamic environments in uh, which uh, the uh, right-sided heart valves are working compared with the left's uh, counterparts. Finally, uh, the guidelines also uh, cover the role of the other imaging modalities, particularly CMR and CT, and also the emerging role of uh, the stress echo. So, uh, in summary, is a comprehensive uh, um, review 
of uh, the anatomy, pathophysiology, severity, grading, uh, and uh, also uh, of uh, the other imaging modalities with uh, the advantage of uh, um, uh, giving the last updated uh, uh, information about uh, these uh, uh, valve diseases. So there are a few things that we haven't attempted to cover in this guideline. Um, first of all, we haven't tried to summarize um, recommended thresholds for intervention uh, to the right-sided heart valves. Um, that, that's beyond the scope of this document. And for those things, we refer the reader to published international guidelines. Um, there are differences between the recommendations of different societies on particular surgical thresholds. Um, and so we didn't really feel it was within the remit of this document to try to summarize all of those things. Um, our focus really is on how to perform comprehensive echocardiographic assessment of the valves um, and really the, the um, theory and the literature behind that. The other thing that we haven't tried to um, encompass in this document is periprocedural um, or intraprocedural guidance, uh, echo guidance for right heart structural interventions, um, because that, that's really a very big topic um, and um, that would merit its own, own document. So we haven't tried to cover that. Well, uh, I think that uh, uh, those uh, guidelines really uh, have done a change of the perspective now the right side uh, valve disease uh, have been looked at taking into account their importance in terms of uh, uh, prognostic importance in terms of main determinant of patients' uh, uh, morbidity and uh, mortality. In these guidelines, you will find uh, both uh, the uh, technical guidance in order how best acquire the parameters you need to grade uh, the disease of the right side heart valve and also you will find the uh, guidance when you have uh, uh, controversial uh, uh, results and how to uh, solve controversials in order to provide the better standard of care for your patients. Um, so one of the things that we did um, as part of drawing up this, this document was to review really all of the recently published international guidelines. So UK, uh, European and North American guidelines. And we have, um, you know, we, we eat, during this current guideline, we summarized all of those, um, but updated them in light of the most recent research. So um, there's no real conflict with um, other uh, international guidelines. But I would say that we've just brought things up to date uh, and tried to inform um, the current, uh, the previously published guidance, um, just in the light of, of what's going on in the literature um, most recently. As uh, Dr. Zaidi uh, has uh, just said, there is uh, no major controversial um, among the BSC guidelines and the other international guidelines. I would say there was no major controversial also inside of the guidelines, and this is the, the great merit of uh, Dr. Zaidi and uh, the writing committee because uh, all uh, the controversial issues were thoroughly discussed uh, uh, and then and a consensus was reached in uh, writing the guidelines. This is just an update. The introduction of the newest uh, uh, pieces uh, of uh, knowledge and of the newest technology in uh, the uh, um, clinical practice of the echo assessment of the, the right side valve diseases.
Well, uh, I have really been surprised by the interest uh, uh, among the colleagues uh, uh, raised by those guidelines. Uh, uh, just that today, more than 4,000 uh, uh, full test um, views and more than uh, almost 5,000 PDF uh, downloads of the guidelines have occurred. And also the Altimatics, mainly guided by the active uh, uh, discussion on uh, Twitter and also on one uh, Facebook uh, page has um, contributed to have an ultimate of uh, 119. That is very, very high uh, for uh, uh, valve diseases that uh, till a um, few years ago were considered the Cinderella or the neglected valves uh, in uh, uh, heart valve diseases. So uh, this is um, witnessing of the excellent work that has been done by um, the writing uh, uh, committee and uh, also the need that there was of uh, such uh, a document uh, in the community of the echocardiographers. So I, I think this document, um, we in the recent guidelines, we tried to move away from um, the previous model for the BSE guidelines, which have been more a um, more a procedural uh, protocol for how to perform an echocardiogram. Um, now we've still got those, we've still got the table, so the traditional format of the BSE guideline document that everyone is used to is still there. And we have, you know, a very detailed table for transthoracic echocardiography, including 2D and 3D, which takes you step by step through all the stages starting from your parasternal window, going through down in across to your sub, all the way to the subcostal. Um, so that hasn't gone. And we still have those columns which show the pictures and we have the column which shows the measurements, how to take those measurements, where to take the measurements. Um, and then we have a similar table showing the same thing for transesophageal echocardiogram. So we really have tried to cover every possible aspect. Um, but what we are trying to move these documents into the direction of is not just being a procedural protocol, but to being a di didactic document which explains the theory and the literature behind what we do so that we have a deeper understanding about what, why we do things rather than just telling us how to do an echocardiogram. So I hope that people will find this um, document both um, informative in a practical sense, um, but also um, enjoyable to read and informative uh, in terms of deepening our understanding of right-sided uh, heart valve disease.